Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Hi everyone! Today we are going to learn about rational functions and graphs. So let's start with some theories. So the first one we are going to learn about how to sketch rational functions curve. And there are only four easy steps to follow. So this is the first one. We will find the identity of the curve. So there are only two types of identity that we can see usually. The first one is numerator larger than the denominator. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c over ex plus f. And we can rewrite this equation into px plus q plus r over ex plus f. Okay, now the second identity is where the numerator and denominator having the same power. So in this case, I will have the squared one. So on top, we have ax squared plus bx plus c over dx squared plus ex plus f and we can rewrite this into another equivalent form which is p plus qx plus r over dx squared plus ex plus f okay now we have finished transforming the equation into their equivalent identities the next step is to find the asymptotes and write the equations of the asymptotes down if they are relevant and then we will be drawing the asymptotes as dotted lines unless the x-axis or the y-axis happens to be the asymptote in which case solid lines are usually drawn and usually there are actually three types of asymptotes we have horizontal, we have vertical and we have slope there are many ways to find asymptotes and we will have a look on how to find those asymptotes later Okay, now the third step is to look at the behavior of the curve. So at this stage, we will consider the behavior of the function for large positive values of x and then large negative values of x. Also, we will consider the behavior of the function for values of x either side of the vertical asymptotes, noting that the value of the function switches from large and positive to large and negative or vice versa unless a factor at the critical value is repeated twice okay final step we are going to find the stationary points so if common sense tells you that there must be a stationary point then this can be located directly by finding dy dx and solving the equation dy dx equals to zero Or there is another alternative approach which we can rewrite this equation y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c over dx squared plus ex plus f as bracket dx squared plus ex plus f bracket times y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c which means we move the denominator onto the other side of the equation which then simplifies to dy minus a times x squared plus ey minus b times x plus fy minus c equals to zero. If we rearrange this equation, the y coordinates of the stationary point will satisfy the equation b squared equals to 4ac. Now let's look at an example. We will be sketching this equation y equals to 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 6. So we are going to follow the steps that we have been discussing just now, the four main steps. The first one is to find the identity of the equation. But we will just rewrite this equation again. 
because we know that there are no algebraic division needed here. Okay, now the second step is to find asymptote. So there are actually three asymptotes as we can see here. The first one is x equals to 2, the second one is x equals to 6, and the third one is y equals to 0. But how do we find it? So it's actually very easy to find the asymptotes of the equation. We just have to look at the denominator of the equation. So in this case, we have x minus 2 and x minus 6. And now we let the denominator equals to 0. So now, for example, we can rewrite the denominator equation into x minus 2 times x minus 6 equals to 0. And then we can solve for the equation. So x minus 2 equals to 0 and x minus 6 must also equal to 0 for the equation to be valid. And now the second way to find the asymptote is to look at the non-fractional part of the whole equation. So for example, right, this equation, we don't have any identity left. So we can rewrite this equation as y equals to 0 plus the whole thing, which is 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 6. And we can clearly see that the non-fractional part in this equation is 0. So the third asymptote is just y equals to 0. Very easy, isn't it? Okay, we are halfway there. Let's move on to the behavior of the graph. So we will first look at the asymptote equation first. So we have x equals to 2, which is a vertical asymptote. So on each side of this vertical asymptote, we can add or subtract a very very small value, which is in this case epsilon. To understand the behavior of the curve on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the asymptote. So for the case of the vertical asymptote x equals to 2, we want an x value which is on the left of this vertical asymptote. So we will subtract it with a very very small value which is epsilon here. Then we obtain x equals to 1.999 something and 1.999 something minus 2 will become a very small and negative value. And if we substitute it back into the original equation, then we got a positive on the numerator over a negative value times another negative value. So the whole y equation becomes large and positive. Okay, to know the behavior of y on the right side of the equation, we now add x, which is 2 now, with a very small value, and we'll get 2.0000000 something. And this 2.00 something minus 2 is equal to some, a value which is small and positive. And if we substitute this into the equation, then we have a positive numerator over a positive denominator times a negative de denominator. So the whole y equation becomes large and negative. So there are only two things to remember. The first one is to look at the numerator and the denominator. Check if they are going to be positive or negative by substituting the x value. Okay. And the second one is to look at the denominator. If the denominator has a zero value, then the y will approach infinity. And if you have a value which is approaching infinity at the denominator, then the y will approach 0. Okay, now we are going to use the same reasoning for the asymptote x equals to 6. So by similar reasoning, y is large and negative when x is 6 minus a very small value which is 5.999. And y is large and positive when x equals to 6 plus a very small number which is 6.0000 something. Okay, now we have finished looking the behavior around the asymptote and now we are going to focus on the behavior of the curve when x approaches infinities. When x approach infinity, y will approach 0 and from the above. Whereas when x approach negative infinity, y will approach 0 as well but from below. So why is it like that? Why from above and from below? So we can gain more understanding by drawing out a simple sketch. Now focus back onto the equation. So we substitute a positive infinity into the numerator first. So 2 times infinity minus 3 
they get a positive infinity up there. And divide by a positive infinity minus 2 times a positive infinity minus 6. So infinity times infinity is a bigger infinity at the denominator. So a smaller infinity over a bigger infinity, we can say that the whole equation will approach 0 as the denominator is now so much bigger than the numerator. Similarly, for negative infinity, 2 times negative infinity minus 3, we get a negative value over a negative infinity minus 2 times negative infinity minus 6, negative times negative is positive. So the numerator has a negative value and the denominator has a positive value, so the overall equation is a negative. So the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so y approach 0. When x approach positive infinity, y is a positive value, so we say that it, the graph approach from the above, and when x equals to negative infinity, we say that the y equation is negative, so it approach from below. And now for the final step, we are going to look at some special points. The first one is to look at the intercept first. So when x equals to 0, we know that y equals to minus 1 over 4. Whereas when y equals to 0, x equals to 3 over 2. Okay, next step, we are going to find the stationary points. But before that, we can do partial fractions to make the calculation easier. So remember from P3, you know how to do partial fraction, right? So we just rewrite the equation y equals to 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 6. And after performing partial fractions, you will get minus 1 over 4 times x minus 2 plus 9 over 4 times x minus 6. We have finished the partial fraction perform dy dx and let it equal to 0 and then you have this equation. Now we rearrange the whole equation and we will get at stationary point we know that 9 times x minus 2 squared minus x minus 6 squared equals to 0. To further simplify this equation into this which is 3 times x minus 2 plus x minus 6 times 3 times x minus 2 minus x minus 6 equals to 0. Okay, we are nearly there. So simplifying the equation, we will get 4x minus 12 times 2x equals to 0. And we know that x for the stationary point will equal to 0 and also 3. Substitute both x values into their respective equation and we will get two y values one is negative 1 over 4 and the other one is minus 1 and hence we have two stationary points we can also perform the second derivative to check for points of inflection by letting d square y over dx squared equals to zero but usually it is quite a redundant step and i will just put it here for a reference for those who are uninterested in this part, you can just skip it to the sketching part. Great, we can now sketch the graph. So how do we sketch it? First of all, we will draw the asymptote. So there are two asymptotes, which is vertical, the one x equals to 2, and the other one x equals to 6. And we also know that there is a horizontal asymptote, but it lies on the x-axis because it's y equals to 0. We don't have to draw it out. Okay, the second step, we have found the behavior of the graph near the asymptotes. 
left hand side of the x equals to 2 asymptote, we know that the y value is large and positive. On the right hand side, we know the y value is large and negative. So we just make a mark there. Similarly, for the x equals to 6 asymptote, we know that on the left hand side, the y value is large and negative, whereas on the right hand side is large and positive. So we make two marks again. Also know the behavior of y when x approach positive infinity, which is from the above. Whereas when x approach negative infinity, we know that the graph approach from below. So now we are finished with the behavior. We are going to plot some important points like the zero point which is on the origin and also the intercepts. We will plot the y-intercept first and then we will plot the x-intercept. Please remember to label the coordinates of the point also. Okay, once we are done with the intercepts, we are going to plot the stationary points that we have found also. And also remember to write down the coordinates of the points. Okay, very good. We have all the points and behaviors that we need to sketch the curve. So what we need to do now is to connect all the points together. Very easy. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the mark scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genie has got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.